Life of Bee, Bee and Puppycat. Bee and Puppycat is a great show. The series is a fresh take on the magical girl genre and revolves around a mysterious young woman and an even more mysterious four-legged creature known as Puppycat. And while the series is technically a children's cartoon, it also contains mature tones that capture the adults we are on the outside side by side with the children we are on the inside. The concept of joblessness, we've all been there multiple times. That is one of the many reasons why the show is so amazing. It speaks to the reality that many people of similar age to be find themselves in, but it also offers a fantastical way out of that reality. That is why I want to focus on B today. Let's revisit her life for a little while. Welcome to the Amagi. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day. So be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Amagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all our social media. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Bee and Puppy Cat first aired as a part of Frederator's cartoon hangover lineup and has become a smash hit. If you haven't seen it yet or want to catch up, be sure to check it out on Cartoon Hangover. And be sure to stream it on Netflix. We'll leave a link in the video as well as in the description below. Lazy in Space is gonna be awesome. We've been waiting for this for three years and I'm sure you don't want to miss it. With the release of such a great show, it is very apparent that Frederator does indeed love you. B is a 22-year-old girl who lives by herself in an apartment complex and has had no easy go of it in her life. While she is generally upbeat and happy, life has seen her go through the ringer. So far, very little has been revealed about her history. All we know of her history is that she lived on an island with her father, who no longer appears to be around. Given B's reaction to her birthday, it is possible that he died. But prior to his death, it was well known that he was an intelligent man who was well versed in electronics, including coding and mechanics. It was known that he made video games for a particular arcade known as Glitch Gorge, where B would often play. She mentioned that there was a game there that her father made when she was sick as a child, and that she played it all the time until her obsession became troublesome enough for her father to take the game to the arcade. Spoilers to anyone who has yet to watch Bee and Puppycat, it is also known that Bee herself is a work of electronics. Whether she was once a person, a full robot, or an android based on a dead child is unknown. All we know is that Bee's left arm is comprised entirely of electronics and ribbon, and that these electronics seem to affect her thought process, as when her arms were damaged, her eyes began to flash different shapes within the iris, and her mind seemed to go straight into a defensive, weaponized mode, where she seemed to display no emotions and act completely on cold and calculated movement with robotic accuracy. This was a big reveal at the end of the first season, and also serves as our logical reason why we know so very little about her past, as it was meant to be avoided so that they could build upon her lore at a later date to keep her an incredibly interesting character. Spoilers, it worked. She was also given a box by her father which has a voice-altering aspect about it, that allows her to say anything and have the box repeat whatever she says in the voice of her father. It also has a built-in song that will play for her annually on her birthday before providing her with a small hard candy. It also can be used to repair any damage done to her body, as shown in the season finale. At some point, she became friends with a young man named Deckard Wizard, who is a talented culinary artist. During her time living by herself, it showed that she can't hold down a job to save her life. This is known as one particular reason why Decker doesn't chase his dream of going to a culinary school, as he feels the need to essentially mother her and take care of her, knowing that she can't particularly take care of herself. The last job she held was a job at a cat cafe. She lost it though, and this occurred just prior to the arrival of a strange puppy. Or was it a cat? She would bring this puppy cat home with her. It is here that Decker gives her a nice casserole, and she gives him some crotch ice that she ends up shoving under the door. She then goes to a temp agency looking for a job, but the agent there essentially says her life at this point is a dud, and that she hasn't been able to hold a job, has no higher education, and possesses no special skills that could make her any use. After dumpster diving for toys for her new pet, she returns home and finds that she no longer has enough money to feed herself, which is an issue. It is then that Puppy Cat provides her with a letter, which she claims has nice stationery, but had better not have any scary stuff in it. It turns out, it's an invitation to Temp Space, where they're allowed to get a temporary job. At this time, Temp Bot thinks she's an intruder and threatens to incinerate her, but decides not to at Puppy Cat's request. They are then sent to Fishbowl Space to watch over a fish named Wallace. After finding that his mom has been gone for two whole minutes, he has become depressed and inconsolable. When nothing works, Puppy Cat tells him a story about a princess and a space outlaw 
which is presumed and confirmed by the creators to be Puppycat in the past. After telling this story, however, Wallace has a strange spiny monster appear in his mouth and begins to berate him due to his trying to make the outlaw sound like a hero. B then proceeds to bite its tongue and slap it in the face with a sword until she breaks Puppy Cat free. The beast then disappears and they return home with a fat stack of cash. The next time we see B and Puppy Cat, B wakes up from a strange dream about Puppy Cats and sees a recipe in a magazine that she wants to make with Deckard. She goes out to buy it, in which Puppy Cat begins to start adding weapons and a leather jacket to the cart before she makes him return it all. She buys as many ingredients as she can, and with a little extra left over, she purchases a pack of gum. She goes to Deckard's house where she begins to help him make the dish, only to display her clumsiness by nearly ruining the dish three times. Only thereafter does she realize that she is short one ingredient and doesn't possess enough money to buy it. So she excuses herself to the bathroom with Puppy Cat in an attempt to find temp work from temp space. Here, she is sent to a strange planet, known as Jelly Cube Planet, where an easygoing man hopes to grow crops for his animals, in which she must take fertilizer to the cherry on the other side of the planet. Turns out, the fertilizer is other people, and B was meant to be devoured by this planet like everyone else. But she kills it and spits her gum into its mouth, which serves as better fertilizer than other people. She returns to the man, who begs her not to punish his animals for his own doing, and she decides to merely take the leaf on his head as a recompense and leaves him as he is eaten by his own animals. Turns out this leaf was the final ingredient. After this, we are shown the current obsession of both Bee and Puppy Cat, The Pretty Patrick Show, which is having a marathon. It is here that we are introduced to Bee's landlord, a small boy named Cardamon. He shows up, his head covered in water, and informs Bee that her toilet is leaking into his toilet, and that, as the current landlord, he is here to fix, which he attempts to do with a toy hammer. To do so, he requests space, which requires her to not only completely leave the home, but goes so far as to the coast where we are introduced to perhaps the best character in the show, Cleavage Crab. B is shown here to have a bit of an innate fear of water, which at first may seem odd, but upon remembering that she is an android, one might understand it more. She just wants to keep visiting various restaurants, hoping that one of them is showing the Pretty Patrick marathon. Without another choice, they go to Temp Space, where they hope Tempbot will just let them use it as a television. But nope, Tempbot sends them to work, in which they have B dressed like a cat. Turns out it's a bathhouse for cats. However, the cats absolutely love Bee, who is dressed like a cat. They dote on her, feed her, and let her watch as much Pretty Patrick as she desires. However, Puppy Cat is curiously considered repulsive by these strange felines, who leave him out, and causes him to miss Pretty Patrick. However, when Bee gets some of the treats all over her outfit, the cats decide to clean her. She assumes they will lick her, but they inform her that licking themselves is too archaic, and they are indeed in a bathhouse, and they attempt to shove her in a bath. However, she resists them and flees. She is then only saved when Puppy Cat steps in between her and them and raises his leg to lick himself. This causes the cats to become repulsed to the point of vomiting. They return to the bathhouse, and Bee and Puppy Cat return home to find that Cardamon has indeed recorded their show for them. However, he spoils that Pretty Patrick's favorite food is mashed potatoes. After this, it is Bee's birthday, and Bee reveals that her treasured box speaks with the voice of her father, sings her songs, gives her candy, and is later shown to heal her wounds. After Puppy Cat asks, she decides to take him to the Glitch Gorge, where they use up all their tokens before they can play her favorite game. After convincing her to take a temp job, they're transported to Cloud World, where they must complete video game-like objectives, chief of which is defeating the Large Eye. However, she neglects this and attempts to do the side quests instead. But after a time, Puppy Cat convinces her to do it, and with the power of his fully grinded out game file, they basically one-shot his eye. After this, it's revealed that rent is due. As she goes with Deckard to pay the rent, they learn that Cardamon is sick, and they offer up many different things to help cheer him up. But when he begins to wonder what a dog and a puppy cat would have in a litter, he asks to have Puppy Cat stay with him. Puppy Cat refuses in a cold fashion. However, when he hears that Cardamon is watching Pretty Patrick, he rushes in. It is revealed that he just wanted to help his dog, Sticky, find love in hopes of becoming more like a prince so he could wake his mom up from her coma with a kiss. I so hope his mom wakes up in the next season. While this goes down, B is with Deckard, where she learns that he has been neglecting his dreams, physically throwing them away to take care of her, which makes her cry. She then later finds Puppy Cat stuck in a window, trying to escape his forced marriage to Sticky. B tries to help them escape by taking a temp job, 
However, instead of teleporting her and Puppy Cat, she accidentally teleports herself and Deckard, who is losing his mind over this. Together, they go to Donut Planet to assist a business owner who doesn't trust his employees and needs someone to watch him while the owner goes to the nearby Toilet Planet. While here, they help Mooley, who is baking donuts, to send to customers through the black hole in the center of the planet. Deckard is having fun, but all of a sudden, hands shoot out of the black hole and begin to rip the planet apart and trying to drag Mooley into it. Bee attempts to save him, but as she does so, her right arm is shattered and is revealed to only be a robotic arm. Remember? We talked about this earlier. She fails to save Mooley, but she does manage to save Deckard and defeat the monster by throwing a deep fryer into it. The owner of this planet returns and believes Mooley did this. Bee and Deckard leave and return home. Deckard decides to go to culinary school, and Bee is shown getting her arm repaired. Puppy Cat, still wearing his tux from his marriage, is shown looking in while she has her arm repaired. She tells him to come in, stating that there were things that they just didn't know about each other. From here, Puppy Cat sits down with her on the other side of the box and begins to ask her about the things she likes. Hoping to learn more about her, he starts with her favorite color. And now we are officially caught up with the show. The show so far is rather short, consisting of vignettes and episodes around 5 to 10 minutes long. It is possible for you to watch the entire series within an hour and a half, which consists of a two-part pilot episode, as well as 10 more episodes that make up the full show. The second season, Lazy in Space, is dropping today! And by the time this video launches, it should already be up. We'll leave a link for you on screen and in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this brief video diving into the history of B. If you did, consider leaving it a like. Leave a comment below and tell us what you think about B, who she is, and what her full history is to you. Is she a full robot? A cyborg? Or is she possibly a robot created with the memories of a real person designed to give new life to a deceased child? After all, how does a robot get sick when they were a child? How does a robot even have a childhood as they wouldn't normally grow? Let us know what your theories and beliefs are. And if you like our videos, feel free to subscribe to the Amagi, as your support means the world to us. Be certain to ring the bell to get notified whenever we drop a new video. Peace. Now go watch that second season.